it's Chinyari here and today I'm giving you guys a quick update on how my study is going. If you guys are not comfortable with videos like this, you don't have to watch. You already know I do studies aka lab ratting it out, okay? <laughs> Proud and educated. But yeah, I wanted to give you guys an update. Y'all are always asking for updates, how it's going, like a video, like more in depth to talk about my actual experience and if I really do them. And yeah, I do. I mean, this is my normal, all right? The new normal, this is my normal for me. If you guys like videos like this, make sure to give it a thumbs up. YouTube likes to know what people are liking and this and that. The study that I'm doing is at Covance. Now guys, I hate studies that have a bunch of outpatients, but I picked this one because I needed to do one more study before I left, honestly, and this was the one that was available. So um, let me give you guys the quick specs on it. This one is two different in-house days. You do one in-house day for three days, and then you'll do three more outpatients, then you'll do another in-house day, three days, three outpatients. It only has 40 blood draws, which is what really drew me in over a almost two month period, so that's really nothing. And then the drug was for ADHD. I've done multiple studies for ADHD drugs and they're very easy. You have typically like no side effects or like very minimal side effects, so I chose this one. Um, the pay is $3,150. It typically pays about $250 per night that you're in there. You get a $300 bonus fee, and then you get like $150 for every outpatient that you do. So that's the breakdown of how studies are usually done there. The study started on July the 20th, and it ends August 31st. They're still recruiting people for it, and they also have a few studies there. So if you guys do do one, just tell them, Chinyere, your guysy, we heard you. Hey guys, this one was probably the most difficult study I've done. Usually, um, it was more the people. It's not the study. It's never the study. I never have side effects. This one, I had, I don't think, any side effects, like, if any at all. I mean, I was passing gas a lot, but I do that anyway, and I could have been because of, like, the high-fat food that they gave us, or, it, like, I don't know. Oh, you know what? They gave me milk, and I'm extremely lactose intolerant, so that was why. My fault. Um, another thing was that this one was a fasting, like kind of like fed study. So there are two different studies that you can do. If you are vegetarian, it's totally fine. Just make sure you're not doing a fed study. Make sure. If you're doing a fed study, you have to eat everything. The butter, the milk, you know, just put the butter on the toast, eat the bacon, everything. And it's typically, you know, kind of like a lot of food. If you're vegan, vegetarian, just pick any study. But as long as you ask them if it's fasting or fed or not, you should be fine. Pick one that's just not fed. Any other one is fine. You don't have to eat the meat. There's always vegetables, water, juice. There's always something like that that you could just take instead. So this one in particular was a fasting study, but we ate a lot. Um, but you didn't have to eat everything. So it wasn't a fed study. It was just, you know, we could eat whatever we want. It's just that we were we were eating like much later on in the day. So I was very, very hungry. Okay, so first let's talk about the screening. I went into the screening around July the 8th, I think. It was like two weeks ago. Um, it was around the time that I bought my piece of land. I went in there and... I mean, overall this whole study was not that great. And I'm going to be very honest. And this is the first time... Um, a study has ever just been terrible for me besides the one I know them like four years ago so yeah like I said I went in there and my screening was at 10 o'clock I made an appointment for the eye doctor for like 12 30 so I was like okay screenings are always on time two hours in and out of there and then my eye doctor will be like around the corner so I went to the screening and I got there and there was like a girl at the desk and she wasn't really all that friendly. She was just kind of being short with everybody and being kind of rude. I had never seen her there before, but she was there the next few times that I went there. You know, I said, hey, you know, I gave her my ID and she's like, okay, what's well, going to be a minute? And I was like, okay, you know, it's no big deal. After an hour of waiting, it was now 11 o'clock. I actually got there around like 9.45 and I knew I was early, so, you know, I just sat and waited. So like an hour and 15 minutes went by. And it was nothing. So I got up and I was like, hey, do you have any idea how long it's going to be? I had seen her being short to everybody because other people were asking, like, not only me, but I asked her anyway. And once again, she's like, I have no idea. They haven't told me anything. Every time I go back there and ask them, you know, they get mad at me, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, okay, whatever. 12 o'clock comes around, nothing. And then I had to call my eye doctor and I was like, okay, I'm actually going to be late. Can I schedule it later? So I ended up scheduling it for 3 o'clock just to be safe. 
Um, I honestly could have just gone to my eye doctor appointment and then came back because I still was waiting. While I was still sitting there, it was around like 12.30ish, um, people actually started leaving that was in my group because they had taken the mega bus there and I mean they were missing their buses because they had like a little window and we were already way past it. Then there were other people coming in who came from out of state and um, they had canceled one of the studies the night before. So just, it was just extremely disorganized. Finally around 1 o'clock they called us back there. I was the only one at that point doing my screening. Um, I think there were like four people with me and then the other three left. And then one girl was just like this isn't even a study that I want anymore so she left too. It was only me, and it still took two hours to do my screening. They were still, um, they were doing outpatients for another group, and they were also screening another group. So, by the time I got there, um, they had to put me by myself and screen me as they would everybody else. So, I did my usual, you know, they did the check-in where they talked to you, collected urine, blood, they did an ECG. They had to do, like, a suicide test, you know, just to check your mental health or whatever. And then they explained what the study is. He was really trying to get it over with quickly. I was out of there by 3 o'clock and I was happy, but on my way there, the whole time I was thinking, like, how freaking disorganized they were. I mean, they, like the way they were just collecting urine and collecting blood, he had no issues collecting my blood, but everything was just like, it was kind of like hurry up and wait, it was being rushed, and some people, they forgot to have see the doctor, so the doctor ended up having to call them, I mean, it was just a bunch of things, like a lot of times when you're doing a screening, you have to see a doctor before you're done, and also when you're doing an outpatient, sometimes you have to go see a doctor. So I left there. Went to my appointment, then guess what guys, they called me that Saturday to ask me to do a repeat. And I was like, I haven't done a repeat in years. That was on a Saturday. They told me the only day they had available for a repeat was on Monday. And I was like, fuck, the study starts on Wednesday. So now I have to go to Dallas two days earlier than I wanted to and just be doing nothing. Anyway, I ended up going there on Monday for the repeat. Um, it was quick, it was just a blood and urine sample. And she told me that they would either hear back from them either that night or the next day. That night goes by, I don't hear from them. The next day goes by, I'm in Dallas. I mean, like horrible Wi-Fi. I ended up having to hang out at um, Target all day. It was just not good. And then Wednesday comes by, the day of the study check-in. And I did not hear from these people, guys. So I was like, you know what? Okay, forget it. So I ended up packing up my things and I'm like, I'm going back to... Houston. I called them numerous times. They never called me to check in nothing. So um, I had already started packing my stuff and I get a call and she's like, where are you? And I was like, what? She's like, this is Linda from Covance. You know, you haven't blah, blah, blah. And I said, you guys never called me. I've been calling you guys for the last three days to see if I got in. I've heard nothing back. So she's like, well, what time are you going to be here? So I told her an hour and she was like, fine. Like, duh, an hour. I live 40 minutes away from the actual facility so and then I have to get myself ready and run upstairs it's gonna be an hour so there was a little bit of traffic it was 10 o'clock usually that's when it's like dying down so I kind of like was beating it um, I get there I forget my things I check in the check-in was pretty smooth typically day one is actually considered negative day one and then the actual day that you dose that's when it turns into day one day two day three so there's always like a negative day I was the last person to check in Obviously, um, I get in there and they didn't have our rooms ready. Actually, the last few times that I've come there, it's taken them like like an hour or two to get it ready. This time it took them like six hours. So we were just hanging out in the TV room. We had, did we have, I think we had like lunch and then we had dinner. And then dinner was at like five or six. And then we finally got our rooms and we got settled in. And then we got our snacks. The first day, they typically will go over like money and then house rules and things like that. So that's what happened. I ended up, you know, getting to know some people. I met subscribers while I was there, so that was really cool. Okay. When we got settled in, I took my shower and then went to bed. Now, I couldn't really sleep simply because I knew that at 1 o'clock, that's when procedures would begin. And that sucks. So, um, 1 o'clock rolled around and... He came in to give us our pills, but the problem was that they had the wrong pills, and he was freaking out. So, you know, I, I couldn't really sleep that night, so I was just tossing and turning up all night because I knew I had to be up at 1. And then, that happened. So I tried to, like, lay down. I did not get no sleep pretty much the whole night. And then he comes back at 3 a.m., and it's like, okay, you know, now it's time for us to start. 
So they give us two pills. I opted to just take like, you know, two in two different cups. He got mad at me because, um, well, I wanted to take two, but you're not supposed to touch the pills like at all. And I just wanted to take it one by one, but I didn't know you had to do it all at once or you had to ask for two cups. So anyway, he got upset. And I'm like, nigga, it's three o'clock in the morning. You messed up the pills and the numbers and stuff. And you guys can't even get your times right. Like, shut up. And we're just getting our rooms like four or five hours ago. Calm down. So I take my pills at 3 a.m. By 5.30 a.m., the other group that's in our room, because there was only two girls in my group, but in the group next to us, there was like five or six other women. There was five other women. So on the, you know, on that side of the room, and then one lady next to me, who was an older lady, that was, you know, the other group. So there started two and a half hours later. So I did not get no sleep, guys. Then our procedures started um, around 7. So, yeah, like, no sleep the first night. Um, they were having a very, very, very hard time drawing my blood, which was ridiculous. I've been doing studies for four years, and I've never had an issue. They just didn't know what they were doing. So, anyway, I ended up getting stuck, like, seven times. Maybe, like, five times, different times, because they just could not get it right. And at that point, I was kind of like, you know what? <laughs> I want to move. <laughs> anyway, so... I don't really fucking care, like, you, you know, anyway, that's what I was thinking to myself, but I was like, no, I'm just gonna let them do this and see if they can do it. They end up finally getting me, and then for every 30 minutes for the first, like, I think, three hours or something like that, or like two hours we were getting stuck, then it went down to one hour, then it went down to two hours, every two hours we were getting a blood draw, then it was like every three hours, and then we had to wait till the next day. Um, it's thundering outside. So yeah, that's how that went on for a little bit. After that, I ended up meeting a couple people. I met like an older woman. Um, she was she was nice. I think I met her. I actually met her the day before, like the first day. She was talking to me about her sister. She was pretty cool. And then I ended up bunking with them, you know, like rooming with them. So I mean, you know, it was it was okay. Um, yeah, so I ended up just kind of hanging out, chilling for the first day, and, you know, just every, we had to keep getting blood draw, getting blood draw, getting blood draw. Um, then, I'm getting my days a little bit mixed up simply because I kind of forgot, like, what was happening, because there was just so much drama. I know that we checked in on a Wednesday, and that we got out on Saturday morning. Wednesday, we did nothing. Thursday was day one, so we did that. And I don't remember, I think we dosed, yeah, we dosed again the next day because the two drugs, they're just trying to see how they work together. So the next, so like one may be, and you may get a placebo and you may get like, um, like one that's already been approved. So it just depends. And you're just trying to see how they work together. These were ADHD drugs. The next day we ended up doing the dosing thing once again. This time, it wasn't at, I don't think it was at like like 1 o'clock in the morning. This time it was at like 7 or something. If I remember, I probably don't even remember. I don't have my sheet with me. But yeah, we dosed, blood draw again. They were kind of having a hard time with me again, which was just getting really frustrating because they didn't know what they were doing. Like, there were nurses there that could get me so easily, but the people there, other people there, like, aren't really trained that well, so they can only see what's really, really visible. Um, anyway, I, um, I ended up showing most of them how to do it. At that point, it was Friday. So this dosing day, I think it was like Friday. Um, I'm not sure, but I just remember that we were like taking it pretty easy. And no, I don't remember it because of the drugs. It's just because I don't really remember what the day specifically. And everything happens so fast in there. Like it's like boom, 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 and everything is timed. I just forgot. But yeah, we were just chilling that day. But like at this point, I was pretty much like really sleep deprived. I barely got any sleep like the last few days and our checkout day was the next morning. So like this is Friday, we check out that Saturday morning. I hadn't gotten any sleep like Wednesday night, Thursday night, you know, what I mean like that morning, no sleep for days and I was just like, okay, now I can finally get some sleep, right? So they let us go like after they dosed us and they drew the blood. I had like a few hours in between. Like I think we only had like three blood draws for the entire day, which was amazing. <laughs> Um, I end up getting my pillow and my blanket and I go to this area and it's called the quiet room. It's where like people go to sit, read a book, watch like TV on like a low, you know, whatever brightness. I go in there, I put, two, I push two chairs together and then I lay down. I'm in there and for the first time in days, guys, I was actually getting like sleep. Um, sleep, you know, I dozed off, I'm not kidding, for probably like... 10 minutes but sometimes that's like 
10 minutes can keep you going for another like day. As soon as I doze off, somebody swings open the door and is like, oh, somebody's sleeping here. And she says it loud and then she keeps the door open and walks away. And so I'm like thinking to myself like, okay, she's gonna close the door, she's gonna close it, right? This girl did not close the door. She, she just like walks away and she's on the phone. So I get up, like I grab my blanket and I'm like, who was this person? So I go to my room to go grab something because I wasn't sure if they were gonna tell on me, you know, and say, hey, somebody's sleeping in a choir room. Cause I don't know if you can sleep in there or not, but they didn't specify. So I ran to my room to go grab something. When I come back, this girl is sitting on the chair on her phone, loud as ever, turned on all the lights in the choir room. I mean, it's a tiny room. It's probably like the size of a large closet, you know? So I do the same thing to her. I go over there and I swing open the door and I keep walking because that's what she did. She never closed it. Then I go back to my room and I lay down. Now guys, you already know I can get petty sometimes. Petty, Betty. Sometimes petty Betty just honestly gets the best of me. Then she comes into the room and she's like on the phone and she's doing that, you know, doing that thing where, you know, you're being, you're being rude but you're not trying to act. I forgot the word but you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. So she comes in and and she's like, mm, don't want to be loud or nothing. Okay, come on. Like, it's obvious what you're trying to do. You know what I mean? So I jumped out of bed. Like, I don't know if this was me. I don't know what the hell is going on with me. But I was like, okay, well, stop being loud. I have to tell this girl. And she leaves the room. She doesn't do nothing. So I go back to bed. But this girl comes in, like, two more times, just being loud on the phone, just trying to be, like, just being rude. Like, she's just trying to, you know be passive oh that's the word she's being very very passive aggressive so i finally lay down get comfortable and i get like maybe like another 10 minutes of sleep but at this point guys i'm already up i'm alert and i'm just laying on my back and i can't sleep at all so i get up and i start walking around and i go in and i tell one of my the girls who like watches my youtube like we became cool with each other she was just hanging out in the tv room and i was like girl i had to tell somebody because i started getting really really boiled up like one thing I cannot stand is like passive aggressive behavior and people just being like a little punk like that's just That really gets to me sometimes and she was like just remember we're here for the money We're here for the money. So I was like, oh, you're right like get it together Trina. I get it together So the rest of the day me and that girl we're just not talking and it's okay I don't ever have to see you again. I don't care. We're not even in the same group or study. I don't care the day ends and this was the first night I got sleep guys. I got about four or five hours of sleep um, I took my shower, I was, and I ended up meeting, like, this really cute guy there, but, I mean, I'm not gonna say who he is, but, yeah, he was just really cute there, but, um, yeah, I mean, we're never gonna talk or anything like that, and I ended up just meeting some really cool, fun people there, it was great over and all, the food was good, too, like, the food, we had, like, pizza, we had, like, BLTs and, you know, soda, we drank lots and lots and lots of water, probably drank about, like, a half liter, I mean, like, a half gallon, like, a day, Probably more than that, honestly. I pee all day whenever I'm in a study. So the night goes by. Um, I take a shower. I'm in bed by 11 because, you know, I want to get the hell out of there. And checkout time is around 9.30, I would say. And then the other girls, their checkout is around, like, 8.30. So around 5.30, at 5 o'clock in the morning, a lady comes in and she tells them that, hey, don't pee because... You're gonna need your cups. You know, we're gonna need a urine sample from you. So if you can, try not to pee or just be wary of it. So they take that as, let's start getting ready. Let's start being really, 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 really loud. Wake me and my other study partner, like, up. Like, she was just, like, like keeping her eyes closed, but she was woke because she started turning a lot. And then I'm up, and I'm like, what the hell? Like, she's like, mm, I can't wait. Mm, I'm just packing. I want to get out of here, so I'm packing right now. And it's like... It's five o'clock, you guys have three and a half hours. Actually, you have three more hours that you could be sleeping. She was just warning you, if you wanna pee, you can pee now. Just like, you know, or you can have them wait in line, you know what I mean? That's all she was telling us. And so I got up, because I was just like, oh, you guys, your checkout isn't until 8.30, right? You know, that was all I said, and then she was like, I don't care, I wanna pack up now. So, you know, all of them start packing because nobody has a mind of their own and one person follows another person even though that's not even what you need to do. So then, they're just waiting for hours because they weren't even checking out or even getting started with checkout for hours. And now we're all just up, so everybody's waiting. 
Around 7.30, the guy comes in and he starts the procedures. Now guys, because um, my blood draw was messed up, I was actually the first person, like number one in the study. It actually pushed me to the last person. So the girl next to me became number one and now I was last. So they had to do the study where they would come to my room, do her, go to the men, then come back to me even though we're right next to each other. He started on our procedures. Now guys, this is when the drama really, really starts. Okay, so he comes over to me and he's like, you need to do your, um, you know how to do like the little like supine thing where you lay down, they take your, you know, respirations and all that stuff and um, he puts it into a system. So I lay down, I think he had already did like my bunkmate, the girl next to me, I don't know if he already did hers or not, I don't remember. But I was last anyway, but they kept getting me mixed up, so they kept doing me first, which was throwing off the whole thing, whatever. So, you know, I lay down to do my supine, and then he starts up the thing. Now, the blinds, every morning, like, there was a build, there was a glass building right next to us, and we had, like, the entire wall was just an entire window of, like, four or five windows tall, like, from, you know, floor to ceiling, floor to ceiling. Um, so the entire wall was a window. Every morning, this woman would get up and open the blinds, knowing we were sleeping. And the sun would hit the glass building and reflect back on us, and it would be so bright and so yellow, like, it could, it was bad. Like, you could see it with your eyes closed. That's how yellow our side of the room would be, and it would just be gleaming on on us for about 40 minutes every morning. So, for my supine, I just wanted to close my eyes and relax, and I asked him, I was like, hey, can we close the blinds? I had already closed them a little bit, like, five minutes earlier I didn't close them enough I because the Sun was actually starting to you know come up more so the more it came up the more that it beamed down and whether it hit us back right so he said sure you know I asked the nurse he did it he went over there and he just closed the blinds I, I was like you know just for this procedure the older lady who I had met on the first day who you know she was pretty nice the first day just you know doing all that she gets mad and she's like um excuse me can we not have our blinds open you know, but, and so he starts saying, yes, you can, yes, you can. And so I said, oh, no, it's just because I'm, she interrupts me, stops me as soon as I said that. And she says, I didn't ask you. And guys, I don't know what the hell came over me. I just, oof, that just made me so mad. I didn't say nothing mean to you. All I asked was for the blinds to be closed while I do this. Guys, a supine, the whole procedure is about six minutes. I'm not even kidding. It's timed at six minutes. She couldn't even wait. I jumped up and I said, I said, I didn't say nothing rude to you. All I asked was for the blinds to be closed. Is that a problem? And so we just started arguing back and forth. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with me? I'm arguing with this idiot. You know what I mean? Like, let her be an idiot. Anyway, I go over there and we start arguing and I close the blinds. I knew she was going to open them back up, but I close them again. And I was just in her face. I was like, blah, blah. She's like, as long as she don't put her hands on me. And I said, bitch, I'm not putting my hands on you. And she was like, don't be cursing at me. And I said, bitch, I'm not putting my hands on you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, she is like 50-something. Shut up. Like, I was not rude to you. So, then he's like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna come back for you and I was like bye because I was the last one anyway he was out of protocol he was out of procedure anyway for even coming to me first he should have gone to the person next to me so yeah he takes my uh, my bunk made the girl next to me but the problem is that now the other girls who are across from there who are messy as hell and fake she's like "Ooh, girl I'm gonna have to pray for you calm down and then one of the other girls that actually came over to her, this woman, when I got into her face, she sat her ass down and acted like she was on the phone. That's what she was doing. But they felt the need to hold her back. And I was like, good, you know, whatever. They're just trying to act like she's all big and bad because she's so loud. Man, she's a big bitch. She will fall hard. And then on top of that, people who are the loudest out that that, they are all talk, no bark. I already know this. So trying to hype her up like they were doing, I was like, this is unnecessary as hell. But yeah, the girl from like the silent room, she was all, you know, just being loud, like, ooh, baby, ooh, I'm in. you know, just being messy, ghetto, that's what it was. So I was telling her, I told her, why are you talking under your breath? Like, if you got something to say to me, say it. That's what I told her. You know, I'm not even like a confrontational person, but I kind of am. Like, I don't like, like, you know, fake. I don't like all that. Like, if you got something to say, say it. Like, we're right here. What's up? Somebody comes back and then Miss Flo comes in and she's like the one who draws blood really good. She's like the manager over the floor. 
and the lady starts up with me again so my bunk mate is like you guys chill like we're only here this is our last day like y'all are taking it too far that's what she said and i'm like for real you're taking it too far and the lady told her she said i wasn't talking to you and i said but you're being loud like you're being loud shut up shut up i have to keep telling her shut up like you're being loud stop talking to people like stop talking to me stop talking about me just do your stuff like do your stuff so we can leave like stop trying to make this you know an issue girl she did not give a damn um, so anyway, Flo ended up escorting me and my roommate out of there because there was two of us and there was already five of them, so it didn't make sense to keep us two and then have all five of them still in the room. So um, they put us in a room and then after a little bit, I was like, you know what, I need to get out of here. Um, I still had a few hours, like an hour and a half before my real procedures even started. So this was still morning time. This All of this could have been avoided. I go into the TV room. I'm talking to like one of my guy friends or whatever who's in there for the m minute or whatever. And he's like, you know, just, you know, get this money. Those women are really, really ignorant. You know what I mean? And just all that. So that's what was happening. Finally, you know, he gets my ECG done. He gets my blood drawn. And then um, it's time for the checkup. When you're leaving out of there, you have to like peel your bed. She was still trying to talk stuff. So, but every time I came in a room, she wouldn't talk. And that's just what messy, scary ass people do. You wanna do all this, but you like nothing. You know what I mean? So I really wasn't paying her no attention. I just don't like being disrespected. It's like, you know, she was like, you know, even my children don't talk to me like that. And I said, yeah, they probably don't, but I'm not your child. And I told her I'm not your child, you know what I mean? So anyway, guys, that's how that ended. I ended up checking out on time everything um, my I was the last one to leave so my checkout was at 9 30 and then me and my friend we ended up going to Denny's to go eat the food was really good you know it was great <laughs> you know we didn't even talk about that situation um, but yeah but everybody heard us but he no but he did tell me he was like man me and what's his name was about to come in there and break y'all up I'm serious he said because we don't want you to get out of the study but and weirdly enough, that made me feel good. Like, for the first time ever in my life, people actually had my back. I was like, what? You know, I'm not crazy. Like, people trying to, you know, whatever. So, <laughs> yeah, he told me that. And then, um, I mean, he was pretty cool. Him and this other guy. Uh, I would always, like, eat lunch with him and, like, three other people. I even met a birthday twin in there. But, yeah, guys. Um... So this was Saturday that we got out. Monday, we had an outpatient visit. I get there Monday, and they told us that our outpatients were at 7 a.m. So we all get there, 7 o'clock a.m. And of course, to our dismay, they're actually at 9 a.m. They took us back anyway, which was very surprising, because usually they're kind of like trying to sneak in their own way. And then they're having a problem, once again, drawing my blood. I drink a lot of water. For some reason, I have so much scar tissue on this vein that um i don't know like you know something wrong is going on um i'm trying i've been trying to like let it heal and just drink a lot of water but i don't know what's gonna happen with that like that's why i'm thinking like this may be my last study um simply because number one i'm gonna start doing other things but on top of that like i don't want to mess my arm up you know from all the blood draws or whatever and i mean you can barely even tell um like, you can see now, like, the scar, but usually, I mean, it goes away within, like, a month and a half or so. Like, it took, like, within, like, two months. You can't even tell I've ever had blood drawn from my arm. And the weird thing is that this is the only part of my body that, like, heals fast. Everything else, keloids, and you can see it, like, three years later, like, my body just does not heal. Like, I mean, it heals, but it just, it stays in my body forever. This part, like, my arm, for some reason, like, the scars go away very, very quickly. So that's what happened the first day. She was like, listen, you're gonna have to drink a lot of water, like at least more than a half a gallon before you come in the next time. So I ended up going to Trader Joe's after the outpatient and then I went to the gallery and I did like a little bit of shopping. And then um, Wednesday I had another outpatient visit, the same thing. Um, she didn't ha She didn't even try to draw my blood at that point. She just had the other lady come in and do it. She drew it easily. Other people can't draw like that. I mean, I don't understand what the deal is, but yeah, she got it. And yeah, now I have one more outpatient visit this week and then I check in again next week. So yeah guys, that's pretty much how my study has been going. I will give one more update at the very end of the study. Probably I'll do another video about this in September to tell you guys how everything goes. As far as um, supplies and all that guys, I always bring just like soap, um, 
a bunch of night clothes. I wash everything before I go in there because if you're not in there at least um, five days or four days or more, they don't wash your clothes. So I always do that. I bring socks because sometimes it's cold. This time it was not cold, which was great for me. I hate being cold. You're not allowed to bring extra blankets or pillows or anything and like no towels. They provide everything for you. And yeah, it was a pretty simple study. Everything that you bring has to have ingredients on it. Um, and also the pay is 3150 and I'm pretty much like you're gonna get majority of your money in August well you're gonna get one paycheck in August I lied <laughs> and then you get your other paycheck at the beginning of September so I didn't see I won't be seeing any money for July at all um, today's the 31st I probably won't see any money until freaking September August so like Actually, this Friday I should be seeing my first check from the study. So that's good. They only did two checks and I'm getting direct deposit. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Um, I know this one was long, but you guys tend to like long sit down talk throughs. So yeah, I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching and subscribe, like if you haven't already. Bye!